Hi everyone, my name is Steve Baker and I do a whole variety of things for Animex International but in this presentation I get to share with you one of my favourite projects that we have been working on and explain how we are working to help improve the implementation and installation of fencing for reptiles, amphibians and small mammals across the world. Animex International forms part of a unique, larger independent ecological consultancy and in my role I'm able to focus on the research and development of solutions that help mitigate the impacts of human development such as roads and construction on wildlife. Now our work spans across many different sectors and styles of projects but today I'm going to tell you more about our commitment to improving fencing for those species that are often forgotten or overlooked. As part of this project, we have reviewed fencing methods for reptiles and amphibians used on numerous projects across the world, and we have used this to shape the first independent best practice handbook for wildlife fencing. Although there are growing amounts of research that looks at wildlife fencing, there is still a lot of research to be done. And unfortunately, what published studies and research papers don't tend to show you is what biologists, planners, engineers and contractors come face to face with every day. And that is what these photos demonstrate. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the materials shown here, together with the way they are installed or maintained, are actually widely recommended and permitted by wildlife regulatory agencies. And frankly, it's just not good enough. What we have done and are continuing to do is combine peer-reviewed scientific research with on-the-ground knowledge from outside academia and combine this into a conclusive, comprehensive and adaptable handbook that can be used as a tool to help identify and implement better mitigation for reptiles, amphibians and small mammals. Now why do we want to do this? We believe that there is often a big disconnection between a biologist's best intentions for mitigation and a contractor's lack of understanding or interest in executing a project in the unique ways that are needed for it to benefit wildlife. Now, we hope that by creating this handbook, it helps to unify everyone and enable them to reference a single resource throughout the duration of a project. This handbook will take the form of an online document that will continually grow and evolve as we learn more and more about this quickly expanding area of science. Now this enables us to ensure we are sharing the most up-to-date and well-informed information in a way other one-off or physically produced documents can't. By keeping this digital, it will also enable us to provide hyperlinks to original sources, videos, quick translations into different languages, as well as give people the ability to download and extract information from it without the need of a scanner or photocopier. The first version is available online now, and here are just a few page examples that can either be viewed online or downloaded to your device. Now I just want to give you three quick examples of projects that have contributed to the handbook so far and give you an insight into the variety of situations, challenges and outcomes that were achieved from them. Now biologists working for the High Speed Rail Authority in California approached us to help solve an ongoing problem with the ineffective plastic mesh fencing. Now the previous fence that was being used was a plastic mesh and research has shown that animals spend a great deal of time interacting with see-through fencing when compared to solid fencing. Now, the mesh was quickly degraded by UV um, and also disintegrated during routine vegetation maintenance. Uh, the mesh fencing also didn't hold up to being recovered or removed when they wanted to reposition it for separate construction surveys or stages. So we had the pleasure of designing and installing a solid fence that was durable, easy to install, but also recoverable so that they could effectively move and reuse the fencing down the line of construction as things progressed. Now, here is a look at one of the specifications and installation drawings we put together for this project. Now this fencing has also recently been adopted by the US Air Force who we are also working with to design a permanent fence to go around one of their northern Californian bases. The second project I want to share with you briefly was the first of its kind and has now helped to influence the mitigation that is being considered on many other projects with existing roadside structures in Canada. The biological team on this project approached me to ask me how they could install a fence for turtles within the extremely limited amount of room between the road and the wetland. 
Now, with not much space to work with and the idea of a second barrier or fence seeing like an impossible task, I suggested that they use the existing roadside guardrail. Now, as it happens, they were actually getting ready for a new guardrail system to be installed. So we designed and manufactured some solid fence panels to fit the new barrier and ensure they could get the materials ready to install at the same time. Now, I must also say they had the wonderful help of Carrie Gunson from EcoCare International, who, with all her experience of wildlife fencing, was able to give on-site help and guidance to the contractors to make sure everything was turtle perfect and the connection to the culverts were done correctly. And again, here is a detailed drawing that was put together to not only inform the manufacturers of the parts, but also enable the biologists to demonstrate to funders what was intended and give the contractors clear instructions of how to put everything together on site. Finally, I want to share with you a project that gets me even more excited than roadside guardrails, and that is some research that is currently taking place in Brazil. Now, I'm excited about this for so many reasons, but the one big one is that I feel we are getting ever closer to answering a question that I find one of the hardest to answer, and that is, how do you stop tree frogs? Now, very soon, we hope to have some results from the studies they're conducting, and the studies are analysing frogs' behaviours when interacting with different fence designs and materials, and we hope this will reveal practical solutions that can be implemented to minimise the impact of linear infrastructure on their populations. Thanks again for taking the time to listen to my presentation today. The first edition of the Wildlife Fencing Guide is available now to download free from www.wildlifefencing.com. Now we hope it will be a useful and unifying tool that everyone involved in conservation and linear infrastructure projects from all across the world can take advantage of. If you want to find out more, I have something you want to contribute to future editions, then please get in touch as I would love to continue the, the discussion and hear what you have to share. Um, so thanks again, everyone, and take care.